I'll give a brief opening, and then we'll go directly to the, to the talks. So um, uh, the, uh, our meeting about conservation laws uh, is traditionally a, a special section of the Colloquium of Mathematics in Brazil. So this is what we do for m already many, many years. And this year, uh, there is a special occasion that Dan Marquezine, who is a, a founder of our laboratory and who was participating also in organization of this meeting. Uh, so uh, Dan Marquezine has an uh, anniversary of 70 years. So this is our great pleasure and opportunity to uh, use this event to celebrate this event. Uh, the, um, this anniversary. So, uh, well, everybody knows Dan, so I think that most of the people here are either of his students, postdocs, or, or collaborators. So that's... Friends. Uh, and, and first of all, friends, of course. <laughs> so, um, what uh, uh, I invite everybody to read uh, a sh well, short text that we did with an effort, mostly Amaury and Brett Plore that we put in the booklet. So if you open the booklet uh, of the conference, so in the beginning you will see several pages which describe um, done contribution both to the development of ma um, applied mathematics in IMPA and in Brazil in general and his contributions to scientific contributions. So uh, now we will go straight, uh, straight to the uh, part of the lecture. So. Uh, this will be, let's say, our theoretical part. And since uh, we are in, many of us are interested in flows of liquids in the porous media, there will be also an uh, experimental part tomorrow at 5.30. So we will have a cocktail. So, well, let's say that our bo uh, human body is a porous media. In a sense, no? So uh, uh, all participants of the, uh, of the workshop are invited Please come. So tomorrow at 5:30, and uh, it will be in the researchers' room. So uh, who does know it, when you go up the stairs at the end of the corridor? So it's the first room you see. Uh, okay. Then uh, you, I think you already understood that our workshop is uh, uh, only takes part first part of before the lunch. So it will be four days only the first half of the day. Uh, well, somehow I got, uh, I lost uh, control of the talk, so there were many, much more talks than the time, so we have, uh, we had to decrease the time of the, of the talk. So please understand this and to try to keep in, in time. Uh, and uh, in the part of the afternoon, there are interesting lectures of the colloquium, so uh, please uh, take a look at the program of the colloquium and and there, there's much to, uh, to attend. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. So let's, let's start. And uh, so don't forget about cocktail tomorrow. So that will be our main part. Uh, so the first uh, lecture uh, is Aparecido de Souza from uh, UFIPB. And he will be talking about uh, recording the Riemann problem for the polymer injection model for uh, in a free phase flow in porous medium. So, Sido, it's so you should take this this this, so this device. I think I have here. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. So it's a pleasure to be uh, here with my friends. And firstly, I'd like to congratulate Professor Marchesi and express my thanks for him uh, for his constant encouragement to me over these several years of scientific collaboration. Thank you, Dan. And I would like to congratulate you for your brilliant career. So, a brief history. I'd like to. I wrote 
in English, and I would like to say some words. But in 1986, after I have passed my qualification exam, Professor Dunn came to me and showed me this uh, paper or notes of <laughs> by Eli I Isaacson. It's a, it was a preprint of the Rockefeller University about the Riemann problem for this system that modeled the injection of polymer in a water phase and moved it passively in the water. And in this paper, Eli took this flux function, it's a uh, fractional flow function, and the viscosity the, the of water depends on the concentration of the polymer. So this was the model. And uh, Dan told me that, OK, this model is very simple. And we have two character speeds, lambda c and lambda s. One of them is a linear generate characteristic field. And the lambda s associated to the buckler left equation. You see the flux function here, if c is constant. Uh, there is a uh, interesting thing because uh, the uh, characteristic speeds coincide uh, along a curve and splits the state space in two regions. At the end, he drafted a picture, he, maybe not, but uh, it's a history, uh, with the solution of this model. I have to say that I think one or two years ago, Blake Temple told us about this model uh, very, very carefully. And it's a beautiful history. So, and then to OK, uh, we have two uh, uh, character speeds, and in the, the, this is the coincidence curve and divides the domain in two regions. In this region, uh, the uh, small current speed is the contact speed. And the other one, let's call the saturation speed, or lambda s. S is saturation. And the solution is, OK, if you take L in this region where lambda c is less than lambda s, this locally, the solution consists of a contact wave, because lambda c is less than lambda s, followed by a saturation wave. And if R is here, since here we have a coincidence of the characteristic speed of the contact shock and uh, sh the saturation shock, and the triple shock rule says that, OK, uh, the Saturation shock decreases from here to that, and I can jump uh, from here to L to a intermediate state here, and followed by the contact wave. And in this region, you proceed in the same way, goes from here to with a saturation wave, followed by a contact wave, and followed by a another saturation wave. This means the saturation wave. And here, we have no intermediate state, because in this point, lambda s coincides with lambda c. And if you are in the other region, the solution is similar. Locally, uh, you start by the saturation wave, because lambda s is less than lambda c, and followed by the contact wave. Here is the same as here. And if r is in this region, you go from here to here by a saturation wave, and followed by a contact wave, and another saturation wave. It's SCS, SC is a composite wave, because there is no intermediate state uh, here. So after that, he proposed that uh, we could extend this model for the true phase uh, flow problem. At uh, that time, they were done. Uh, Blake Temple, uh, Plore, and Eli Isaacs, they were working in the two phase, in the three phase flow uh, that corresponded to these two equations. And they were considering C as constant and uh, the, the, the viscosities, mi O, mi G, and mi W, all of them were equals. So 
what I had to do is uh, to consider another equation, like in the Isaacson's model, plus this equation. And take a uh, perturbation of the uh, water viscosity by this function depends on C. U, V, and U minus U and V are the phase saturation. C is the polymer concentration in water that moves passives in the water phase. I do not remember exactly, but he, I think he told me, oh, the problem is very easy. It's similar to the Isaac's model. You have nothing to do. In one or two years, you finish this, and everything will be ready. Huh? You know the magazine. But <laughs> what were the main difficulties? Uh, I <laughs> list two of them. First of all was that, okay, we perturbed the water viscosity. Now MW is uh, bigger than one. And there was a break in of the symmetry of the two by two system that they were considering. Uh, they were trying to solve this problem at the same time. I think they already had some uh, results about. And uh, the other question is, but now, how to visualize, visualize curves and their relative positions in the 3D space? Because in, in the 2D space, it was easy to see. But in the 3D, uh, <laughs> I. What do you mean by MWC is bigger than 1? MWC is the, is the, the, the viscosity of Water depends on the polymer concentration. Oh, so it's the ratio between the viscosity in this polymer oh. and this alcohol. Yes, it's okay. a ratio. Okay. That's right. Thank you. Uh, okay. And uh, now <laughs> uh, I have to do, okay, let's analyze the elementary waves for the systems. We have the same uh, a character speed, the contact speed, and the two others where the the here, S is not saturation, but means it's low, and F means fast. Families of the characteristic speeds of the two by two system for constant C. I have to see the clock there. And, but we have, now we have uh, not only a curve of coincidence, but we had uh, two vertical coincidence surface, TS and TF where there were the coincidence between lambda S and lambda C, and lambda F and lambda C, respectively. And also, uh, uh, we had a coincidence curve that I would U, where lambda S coincides with lambda F. But fortunately, there is no triple coincidence between the three eigenvalues within the domain. But <laughs> how to visualize this in the 3D space. Oh, what we did is uh, we work with projections. And if we co uh, consider uh, a projection here, I think it's a projection along a plane contain the lines, a straight lines through A and through W and U. So, the system is invariant along this line. And we project along a plane contain this line. A vertical plane contain this. And we have something like this. Here is the coincidence curve, lambda s equal lambda f. Uh, it means that I build points for each c for the 2 by 2 system. Here's a coincidence between lambda C and lambda S, and the coincidence between lambda uh, F and lambda C. And here is a cross session by C constant. You see a coincidence surface, the cross session here, the another one is here. And here are the regions uh, where the domain were divided or is divided. Uh, the integral curves we had the same as in the two phase uh, in the, the two by two system. Lambda c defines a linear drainage field, and the, the, the vector fields has this expression. And you see here 
uh, the influence of the coincidence of eigenvalues, uh, the same uh, surface here. So the C integral curves are like this one. And we did the projections here. Here it's, it's not only a cross section, but also is a progression of this branch of the, this contact branch and also the branch of this, this branch here. So you can see this like a projection. Uh, okay, it's similar to the two phase model if I look to this picture. A uh, discontinuous solution, we have the continuous locks like this one. We have the, the, the for C constant, we have the, the, the Runeau curve for the 2 by 2 system and contact discontinuities that we call the contact waves. And also in 3D, we saw something like this. But now I plot the uh, Runeau curve, the Runeau branch. Uh, on the plane C equal CL. Uh, and you see that the contact branch that starts here goes to here, to the coincidence curve, and goes back to here, something like this. And these other branches go from here to there. So, but we had some invariant regions uh, under the vector field EC. Uh, as I told, uh, the coincidence curve you see is an integral curve of this vector. You see the coincidence curve here is a vector, is an invariant. Also, uh, we have the 2 by 2 system along these lines uh, are reduced to the uh, scalar equation and also we can see along this that the EC also is invariant along this. Here we have a plane because the system is symmetric in relation to this, this the, the, uh, line. But here, as C varies, it moves from uh, the, the center of the triangle in this direction. So we have six regions, six invariant regions bounded by this invariant surface uh, defined before. Uh, and initially, we divided the domain in six regions to consider the Riemann solution for fixed left states. And remember that they are symmetric in relation to this plane uh, EW. Uh, L1, 2, L2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And how do you know? Uh, the contact branches, because the, the branches associated to C constants uh, is the same as we knew from the 2 by 2 uh, saturation system. Uh, so if we were for L in this region, here we have one invariant region, uh, the contact branch is only this curve that goes from the minimum to the maximum C. And if we move L from here to here, something like this, okay, we have now we have this contact branch here. Remember that this region is invariant for these curves, and in the projection in this plane we have something like this. If we move from L to uh, L, if you move from here to a place like here, uh, by the triple shot rule, we got uh, another uh, point of the coincidence, and we have the appearance of uh, another contact branch, branch here. This branch really is along the plane containing O, W. It's something like this. For L, it's in this line here. If I move from here, inside the region, this contact goes from the boundary into this 
region, this invariant region. And now, moving really from here to this invariant uh, plane, we got something like this. If you know here, you have this curve corresponding to this one and this one. Now, they meet at a state here, it's something like this one. This branch goes from here to here, and this one from here to here, and I am projecting in this direction. So here, what I see is this branch, L, right here, and this other branch here, this one. They are meeting at a state S star. So S star is a secondary bifurcation state of the Hugo locus. Uh, of L if L is in this line. Okay. Now I'll move L from this region to this region here. And I got a, uh, another surface here. It's another invariant surface because this coincidence here. And if L goes from here, this branch that was in this region moves to this region. And this one moves from this region to this one. And again, moving L from here to there, this branch comes back to this region. Something like this. And this one goes back to, from here, it goes back to here. Okay? So, how to proceed to solve the Riemann problem for this problem? First of all, okay, let's assume that just now, that time I had to solve this problem. But uh, now let's assume that the Riemann solution for the initial data LR are known uh, in each uh, constant plane of C. Also, for simplicity, let's assume that the solutions in the plane, in each plane C constant, consist at most of two wave groups. Uh, connect L to R separated by only one constant state. It's just for simplicity. And uh, the construction of the Riemann solution depends essentially uh, in the knowledge of the wave curves in each plane C constant, the entropy condition for contact waves, and the shock triple rule uh, to analyze the compatibility of the wave speeds in sequence of waves. And okay, but we have three uh, characteristic speeds. So we have three types of wave curves. A lower wave curve, an intermediate, and the upper wave curve. Uh, they are a combination of the slow and the fast family wave curve segments set with plane C constant with the contact curve segments connecting distant planes of constancy. For example, <laughs> let's take uh, L in uh, region L6 where uh, lambda C is upper than lambda F, the fast family car speed and the slow car speed for the HC constant. And R near vertex uh, O, uh, but with the opposite uh, position of lambda C. And let's assume also that uh, we are injecting polymer. So CL is bigger than zero and uh, CR zero. So what is the Hogenio curve for this state? I am um, talking that, okay, L is near here. In plane C equals CL, we have this Hankini Hogenio curve and the two contact branches. I draw these points here, that means this branch. And this branch does not appear here because I am too near of this curve, but it's below this plane. Uh, so the construction is uh, locally, if we are in this region, we have to start with a uh, slow saturation uh, wave. It means that we are in the horizontal plane, C equals CL, and we have something like that, the slow family wave curve, lambda S of L. <laughs> this local is the first 
uh, uh, parts of the wave curve. And this means that also is the lower wave curve for the 3 by 3 system. And from each uh, state in this, oh, where is, ah. <laughs> Each state in this uh, is lower in this uh, lower wave curve. We got uh, M state, and first intermediate state, and followed by the fast family uh, uh, wave curve uh, WF. Again, on plane C equal CL. I wrote only the forward wave curve here. And uh, as we know here, this is a segment of the uh, highly fashion uh, waves. But remember that here we have lambda s less than lambda f, that it's less than lambda c. So first wave is lambda s, the second one is lambda f. But at this state, there is a coincidence between lambda f and lambda c. Uh, so, okay, this is part of the intermediate wave curve, but we have to continue from here. So, from here we continue by a contact segment, for a contact of the 3 by 3 system, and it goes from region L6 to region L5. Yeah, thank you. Uh, by the contact wave. The project is something like this. The fast wave, these parts here, and the contact wave here. Now it appears here. here huh? So if I varies m along this curve, m t varies along a curve here, an intersection curve between the fast wave curves and the coincidence surface, and these branches of contact uh, segments generate a surface that I'm called SFC in region L5. Now, I consider the backward uh, wave curve from R. This backward curve intercepts this line in plane. Now you see I am in the plane C equals CR. And I go back for C equals CR. I consider CR as zero. So the, the, this point is in the center of the triangle. It's the red triangle. And you see this curve is uh, intercept this curve gamma here. And you have the Riemann solution. Uh, the Riemann solution, so it's a slow wave from L to M, followed by this segment of fast wave curve joining to this contact wave means this notation here, followed by a fast family uh, wave group here from N to R. So it's very easy. The Marquezine was right. It was an easy problem. Uh, OK, but let's change the region. What about the solution for L on L3? We have three minutes. So this is the solution. <laughs> so <laughs> we got this surface. It's, uh, I took from the, my uh, PG thesis. L is this state here. But the construction of the surface consists only by uh, contact segments and slow segments of wave curves. And I paid someone to do this picture for me. OK, I would not say the solution, huh? but we got it. OK, so thank you for your attention. And my honors to these people, these guys that was in my thesis. It's uh, Isaacson, Professor Dan, Lucinha, Bradley Plor, and PJ. Uh, this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy here? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>